So uh, bacterial infections are a really big area and they interest a huge number of people coming to ECMID. That's witnessed by the number of abstracts we've had submitted in the area and they cover a range of really big topics such as sepsis, community acquired pneumonia, uh, skin and scoff tissue infections, urinary tract infections, CNS infections, a whole range of everyday practice for many infection specialists. Um, and in my particular area, which is TB and related mycobacterial diseases, I think illustrates many of the things uh, that are exciting about uh, bacterial infections. So for example, they infect a wide range of the population, often people coming from resource poor areas and people who are involved in international migration. And also, uh, like many areas of bacteriology, uh, antimicrobial drug resistance is a big, big issue. And the ways that we might com combat that using everything from host-directed therapies to new applications of old drugs to developing new drugs uh, is right at the forefront of the kind of things that we'll be looking forward to hearing about at ECMID. Uh, well, we've had a, a very rigorous approach towards selecting speakers and posters uh, and sessions really based on merit. Uh, and we've got some great talks, some great speakers. Uh, and actually within that selection process, minorities are represented. We've got a great gender balance. Uh, we haven't needed to take any special measures. We're just there based on merit. So I think one of the things that was um, of great interest to us was that there were a lot of abstracts that pertained to the use of um, surgical site infection prophylaxis in the era of antimicrobial resistance. It's a very pertinent clinical question and so we think that ECMED would be the perfect place to come and hear about the findings in that area. Um, the other thing that was of interest was that there was a lot of uh, emphasis on novel diagnostic methods and so early and accurate molecular methods of diagnosis are also likely to be very helpful. Well, there are lots of hot uh, issues in vaccinology and, and it's, it's hard to make a selection on which ones you bring uh, up to the oral sessions and which you put in the poster sessions. What we have is news on Ebola vaccine, we have news on dengue vaccine, we have uh, 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 new pneumococcal vaccines uh, and of course influenza is always topical, new influenza vaccines in the horizon. And then measles is back, uh, it's striking back again. Um, so, really, I mean, you could, you could spend the entire ECMID just looking into vaccines related uh, and vaccines, preventable disease related uh, topics. It's essential that we uh, address the issues that are pertinent to minorities and um, gender-related issues. Uh, for the latter, HPV is particularly important. It's an infection that causes cancer but is also preventable. So we need to do our best to highlight um, the importance of vaccinations uh, for HPV but also how we can better diagnose it and prevent it that way. Uh, it's particularly pertinent to women, but also uh, for men who uh, develop head and neck cancers. So we felt it was very important to highlight HPV and what it, what it does. Uh, from a minority point of view, uh, we of course in the field of virology uh, highlight uh, HIV infection, which does tend to um, affect um, men more than women, but also uh, for people from countries of high prevalence tend to be uh, under resourced countries. So it's always important to uh, highlight the importance of that, the access to medications when it comes to um, HIV and indeed other uh, viral uh, infections such as hepatitis. Uh, I think by two main uh, situations. So first of all, as we are dealing with new drugs, of course these drugs are oriented to uh, multi-resistant bacteria, which are very frequent in uh, minorities. And the second point is about drug individualization, uh, meaning using therapeutic drug monitoring, for example, because we can adapt the dosing to each type of patient, like uh, small children, uh, women, and uh, other types of uh, specific populations. Uh, you find that um, follow the general guidelines which you try to adhere to. Yes, we attempted to balance the projection of uh, the of males and females. 
and of course uh, in terms of international issues uh, migration economic migration from uh, low-income countries and associated problems as uh, again related exportation of infectious diseases and then in terms of minorities of course uh, I'm an example I would say uh, ECME tries uh, to give to project the interest of these uh, groups and uh, as much as possible I think there's progress So I, I think um, we're in a very exciting time for, uh, for science and um, really everything from CRISP, CRISPR technologies uh, through to uh, new uh, laboratory automation is important. Uh, it's helping diagnosis and it's helping uh, uh, harnessing the human immune response to fight infection. And I think that's one of the really exciting areas uh, that stands out of being of great interest uh, going forward and I'm sure we'll get some insights into that at ECMI this year. I think new methodologies, uh, particularly whole genome sequencing, I think will become standard of care, uh, especially for outbreak investigation. It provides a really good, robust method of uh, evaluating and assessing it. I think that interventions that use really robust methodologies, uh, such as cluster randomized clinical trials, are likely to be key to the field in the future. Well. The diagnostics of vaccine-preventable diseases are advancing all the time. How shall we use that in measuring the disease burden of that uh, uh, vaccine-preventable entity? That's really important. Cost-effectiveness calculations are very important because the more vaccines we have, the more important it is that we choose the right vaccines to the right populations. And if we're paying for the vaccines from uh, the common pot of taxpayers, then that is also important. So, diagnostics, understanding disease burden, understanding how vaccines work, how effective they are and in whom they are effective. These are really the future trends. So, I mean, they've been here with us for decades. That will not disappear when new vaccines come. We need to know how to use them better.